Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, and we got a lot to talk about today. We've got, oh, just a few more minutes until that Bitcoin halving comes. Um, we're going to talk about the fear and greed index, traditional markets, take a look at Bitcoin price action, uh, some supply stuff, and funding rates, open interest, all the good stuff, and a couple of uh, meme coins I'm going to save for the end that I think are very, very interesting. Needless to say, let's start off with the chart of the day. And uh, I'm going to take off those moon phases first. Why? Well, the moon's actually got it pretty well. And throwing it down on a little bit of a lower time frame look here, uh, you can see the measure move off of this pennant has still not been hit yet. Um, and I'm still going to goose the odds in the favor of the bears right now. Why is that? Well, um, one more swipe of the liquidity down here to this last kind of high value vector candle right here. Uh, the volume coming in off of this guy. They want to take out all that liquidity. Uh, needless to say, this pivot right here, the biggest volume uh, candle was actually a doji. Let's see that again. Just to zoom in a little bit here. That was the biggest volume candle. And the bottom side of this wick here is already been filled so the next notch down is right here and um let's see if we got anything else to the downside if they are going to come for some more yeah that's pretty much it so um you know not only is the production cost of bitcoin about to really start to um take off here but so when is the halving? Well, one day, seven hours, 21 minutes. And yes, the block reward will go from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoin. Um, I do think it is a good idea to kind of visualize the Bitcoin supply. And since we are going to be cutting the supply of Bitcoin that is mined in half in just one day, I thought this was interesting. Shout out to Kyle Dupes over there at Banter bringing this one up. Um, Bitcoin supply visualized. So there's roughly 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges. You've got 1.75 million zombie coins, right? Those are coins that are lost or stolen or never recovered. They've never moved for a very, very long time. Very, very likely these coins are lost. So the actual supply of Bitcoin, 21 million, is actually much, much less, you know, call it uh, 1.75 zombie coins. You've got 1.125 uh, owned by Satoshi, the founder. Uh, Bitcoin spot ETFs already have 670,000 Bitcoin, quickly gobbling up a lot there. Uh, the amount of Bitcoin mined per year, 300,000 roughly. That's going to get chopped in half to 150,000. Uh, seized from the token plus scam, 200,000. Uh, MicroStrategy has about 200,000. Block one. Uh, block one. I think that is, uh, what's his name? The, the guy, the founder of Twitter. Um, is that him? The team, block one. Looks like they just changed their website. No, I must have been mistaken here. Anyways, this is the block one team. You want to see their smiley faces. Apparently, they believe in Bitcoin because they have a lot there. Um, back on to it here, though. You've got 162,000 wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum. That is for the people storing their Bitcoin in a MetaMask wallet or some kind of Ethereum-based wallet. Mt. Gox coins, uh, still, still about 138,000. 94,000 seized by the U.S., uh, Tether holds a bunch of Bitcoin in reserves and, uh, well, the first 10,000 Bitcoin paid for two pizza. Um, rest of the circulating supply and the number of Bitcoin left to be mined. So remember, this is going to happen. The next 1.3 million Bitcoin will be mined over the next 100 years. So bottom line, I thought that was the most important thing here is the zombie coins plus uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. That's about 2.7 million coins that are, well, uh, haven't moved in, you know, they're very likely uh, not going to move. So, you know, call that 3 million coins. That leaves us with 19 million. Um, very, very low supply. And the other interesting fact is that the amount of Bitcoin mined per year, 
328,000 is going to get cut in half. Uh, remember, 900 a day, it's about to get cut in half to 450 a day. So what else will I bring up is the production, the <laughs> production supply. Production cost, the production cost of Bitcoin. That's the name. Production cost. Production cost. Ba, 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 ba. So I'll bring it up here on this good old daily chart analysis here for. Um, we have been talking about this for some time, guys. If you've been on my channel, make sure you do like and subscribe. Um, if you are enjoying some of the content, we do bring these videos to you pretty much every day. And um, yep, so always love to get a little help out on the channel there. Um, other than that, guys, really simply put, this red line down here is the production cost. It's about to double. Uh, this was the last Bitcoin halving, right? Uh, we say... Well, what's going to happen? The production cost is going to double. And notice there is a lot of chop right around the Bitcoin halving. And then the real move really takes place uh, about 30 days. Oh, that was, it was about a two-month consolidation, in fact. Um, but, you know, having production goes from, you know, 3,000 to 8,000 or 9,000. And really never uh, never goes back below the production cost for the rest of the bull market. So if production cost, and again, I'll give you another example back here. Production cost um, coming in at 300 bucks and bang jumps to 700 bucks right after the halving, right? So, you know, whether you want to say it was down here or whenever it was, but production cost, you know, the cost for electricity, mining rigs, et cetera, et cetera, you can see it is just up and up to the right. And Bitcoin does not like to go below production costs. So um, what I thought would be interesting, and by the way, there's our ultimate target for Bitcoin uh, during this bull run. Every single time, um, you know, we have hit the 4236 FIB. So another nice uh, point. But what I was thinking would be interesting is this, right? So, you know, maybe we get the wick down, by the way, you know, again, we get the wick down to uh, 58.8, you know, 58,300, you know, could it go lower, maybe all the way down to 50,000 bucks? Yeah, it could, of course. I mean, who knows what, you know, where the bottom is. Nobody's, you know, nobody's got an exact target, but uh, we did, I, I did want to bring up uh, actually a tweet I posted back here. Um, based off of the bearish divergence that was formed. But uh, back onto my, my, my comment here. So tweet, make sure you follow us on Twitter. They're always posting funny memes. So if confirmed with a weekly closure below 60,000, five drives of bearish divergence could, be, could send Bitcoin to 44,000 or lower. I highly doubt if we can make it in the next two weeks without a close below 60,000, but it's something to be aware of. So needless to say, I was pointing out the bearish divergence and, you know, it, it does, it did play out, in fact, on the weekly time frame. Um, well, it hasn't played out yet, but um, if we do close with a weekly below $60,000, that would likely, you know, send Bitcoin a bit lower. But um, here's what I think is going to happen, guys. Here's what I think and what I'm postulating. The moon phases, the moons, the moons. And oddly enough, you know, you can see if you sell on a bear moon and buy on a bull moon, uh, that one didn't work out on the sell side, but uh, the bull moon certainly worked. Bear moon, bang. Bull moon, bang. Bear moon, bang, right? So it's, you know, not going to be a perfect hit rate, but uh, pretty darn, pretty darn good hit rate. And what do we have coming up here in just a few days? So what happens is you get a new moon every 15 days, uh, whether it's a full moon or a zero moon, whatever it is. I'm not an astrology guy. I don't believe in the moons. Uh, but the chart doesn't lie. So if we get that one last week down, we get that new bull moon and then we send it right a few days after the having, uh, by the way, that is going to be Monday, uh, next week is when that new bull moon does take effect. Today's Thursday. We did have some economic data come out today, uh, which was a little bit more on the bullish side for the dollar, I believe.
let's just check in. Actually, it was a little bit bearish. So that's Monday. We want to look at Thursday. Thursday news. So Fed Bostic is going to speak today. Uh, Bowman and Williams already spoke. So jobless claims came out. Why is it not uh, showing? Let's refresh the screen here. Jobless claims, jobless claims. Here we go. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, jobless claims. Apparently, it did not come out yet. That is, is that the 25th? This is the wrong week. Let's go to today. Today, help me out here. Um, today. Let's try it again. Something is wrong with this. Uh, so today's Thursday, the 18th. All right. Existing home sales were lower than expected. That is, I would say, uh, bearish for the dollar. Bearish for the dollar. And then you've got existing home sales. Yeah. All around came in lower than expected. So people are buying less homes. No wonder interest rates are so high. Um, and then we had jobless claims. In April, came out better than expected, but the four-week average was right in line with expectations. What do we have tomorrow, Friday? Uh, really nothing but speeches tomorrow. Monday, do we have anything? No, nothing on Monday. So that's good for the having. No bear news. And then S&P Global uh, Manufacturing on Tuesday next week. So that's all as far as in the future. I, in durable goods. So kind of nothing that I see major coming in for next week. So maybe it allows for a bit of a rebounce, a rebounce, a rebounce. Um, we did break the falling wedge and very similarly, right? Uh, we did say, hey, look, if we break this, we come back and do a retest of the green 55. You'd expect the rest of the move to play out. We have one, two, three. That's your three waves. So probably going to get a bounce off this region. I would suspect a bit of a bounce off this region after NASDAQ took it on the chin for 6%. I mean, it's the most down days in a row for the stock market that I have seen in a very, very long time. So uh, I am a bit suspect of the bounce on Bitcoin today. And I would suspect that, you know, in fact, we do something pretty similar here. Um, when I say similar, what am I talking about? Well, same thing. We got the measure move coming in at 58,300. So one more drive to the downside. Um, also noting on the hourly time frame, we have not sold off the purple 200 yet. So very likely, you know, um, you're going to sell off on the first pass. And I will say this on Bitcoin's price action, as long as we were below this, uh, the 0.5 and the 618, which is that green box of peace and prosperity or death and despair, then you, well, actually, I got to redraw this. <clears throat> peace and prosperity and death and despair. Let's see if we did it on a candle body basis. Is that what we did? Nope. So I got to draw, uh, I'm, I am going to do this on a candle body closing basis. So as long as we're above, below this level, pressure's on to the downside. Really, guys, um, we want Bitcoin to trade sideways and down right now. It's better. It's better. It will prolong the bull market. If the market just rallies to the moon right now, um, from what I'm hearing out there on the interwebs, uh, it could shorten up the cycle a bit for Bitcoin. Uh, I'm still goosing the odds in the favor of this being a macro bull market. There's a lot of demand, not a lot of supply. We're getting the halving. So even if we have one more swipe down, I would consider it just a major buying opportunity. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, might as well. Uh, so we did NASDAQ, S&P hit the target. Uh, sorry, NASDAQ hit the target. S&P looks bearish. And I do think this is going to get bought up, guys. I don't think they're going to let the market crash uh, during an election year. Um, you know, if Powell's got to come out and cut rates. Look at this gap all the way down here for the Dow Jones. Uh, Dow looks like it's, you know, leading the pack to the downside. Once you see the 21 cross the green 55, uh, you would expect price to get sucked into that cross. If it rejects again, could be a bit of a prolonged uh, downside move. Lastly, Bitcoin on the weekly Bitcoin on the weekly. Oh, that 
I think that is uh, somebody I need to answer the phone for. Bitcoin on the weekly. Uh, apparently, uh, when stochastics leave the bullish control zone, um, it does typically mark a low, according to Mr. Crown. Uh, and the statistics behind that, right? So, you know, statistics and probability, I do completely agree with that's, that's how technical analysis works. And if you want to just, I guess we could just do a couple of testers here, right? So as we're leaving the critical zone there, okay, don't trust verify. We're leaving the critical zone there. Um, I would call it on th maybe there. Yeah. And we'll do one last one, one last one here. So it's as the blue line leaves the critical zone. So we're just looking at five iterations. And what do you know? Well, if we would have just moved this over slightly, that marked, yeah, that marked it off. So maybe that's, that's the area to be in is kind of right in this zone, I would consider this one a major failure. Um, but just for kicks, uh, let's mark off one more. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. So as we, as we left the critical zone, that marked the low off the 21 here before a major rally. Um, here. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm gonna give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto traders dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. So, Marks the low there, low there, low there, failure here, low here, low here. And because we got that halving coming up in a couple of days and volatility is beginning to decline, that shows you that the weekly move, uh, you know, is, is a bit of a mean reversion to price action. So we've been making highs. The mean reversion of price would send us down. And maybe we come fill out that, at least the middle of this, this guy right here. And that is coming in at about the 21s there at about 55, uh, 54,000. That I would consider a major buying opportunity. And yes, everybody does talk about the weekly 21. As long as we're above the 21, we're in a bull market for the weekly time frame. <coughs> Lastly, our pie cycle top indicator, uh, the primary, the pie cycle market top. I do want to take a look at this on the daily time frame, which has marked off all the major lows and, uh, are we coming anywhere near to a top? No. The top comes in when the blue line intersects price action. Look where we're at. It's way up here. Not even close. So, um, again, <clears throat> what could we see? Perhaps price action heads up to our target over the next, you know, what are we assuming? Something like 60, 80 weeks. Oops. 70 weeks. 70 weeks. Um over the next 70 weeks, you know, Bitcoin just marches its way onwards and upwards to our target of about 240,000. Um, and we see the blue line come down, right? We see it come through, something like that. Time to get out, time to get out, sell everything, sell everything, time to get out. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Wanted to point out Dixie, um, as we did say, Dixie is looking bullish continuing to the upside. And I have noticed that the correlation between Dixie and stock market and Bitcoin has been more correlated as of lately. As of lately, dollar go up, well, risk assets go down. It's been, you know, kind of uncorrelated. Um, let's see. 
throwing on NASDAQ. Or let's, um, let's look at Bitcoin compared to the dollar and get off this Pi cycle top indicator. Let's go back to our regular chart here. Number nine. Number nine, number nine. Oh, my take profit just got hit on that trade, I believe. Thank you, sir. And, you know, we are getting the golden, or the, the golden cross, the 15-minute um, time frame for the short-term time frame traders out there as we come into the golden cross with a 21 cross of the green 55. Um, do we get a bounce? Well, I would say yes, as long as we don't do something like this where we lose the 200 with a candle body closure below with volume, and that would probably let you know that, hey, the downside move is going to erupt. And, uh, you know, I'd be watching that trend on the daily. I'd be watching that trend on the day, or excuse me, on the 15 minute time frame in particular, if you are a shorter term time frame trader and just kind of reminding myself here that, hey, if we do close below the 200 with volume, something like that, right? Something like that. See, that was a fake out. You got the golden cross. Oh, buy here, buy here. Nope, smashed it in your face. Same thing right here. We're, you know, attempting to do the golden cross. Didn't even get it. So if you see these moving averages start to curl back down, we lose this trend line. That'll be your signal, probably gonna hit that 58.8. And what you'd also wanna see is volatility begin to expand. Expansion. Expansion, 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 expansion. Uh, excuse me. Volatility is expanding as we're going to the upside. So now as it's contracting, you'd expect price to go sideways or down. For our time frame, coming up to that green 55, you do have the death cross on the other side here. Um, you know, to me, it does look like we could get a pump up to the 55, take out that last bit of liquidity. Speaking of liquidity, check out High Block Capital. Um, amazing service and something that, you know, I have been kind of beginning to use more often. Uh, you can see, you know, people were net short. They almost flipped to net long, and now what's going to happen? Those longs, I mean, look at all that liquidity down there. So, you know, we have 152 short liquidations to 120 longs. Shorts are, excuse me, longs getting liquidated if we push down one more time to, well, uh, where the next liquidity bubble does lie. Notice that when it gets to an extreme here, around 357,000 uh, uh, longs. That's, you know, kind of the number for a bounce. So just keep an eye on that. Sorry, when, when shorts, see shorts are getting squeezed here. So people are net short. Market maker sends it back to the upside, takes out the liquidity. Okay, now people are net long right here and it just barely flipped. Speaking of that, um, you know, as we are in a downtrend, as people begin to get net long, that's when these downside moves typically are taking place. Um, yeah, you know, just let the trend be your friend there. Um, funding rates, excuse me, open interest, and then we'll check in on funding rates. So open interest refers to all the leverage positions, all the futures contracts out there. You can see as price went down, uh, open interest went down, and that's typically how it goes. You know, as price, um, it doesn't have to go that way. Open interest can go up as the market is going down. And that is kind of a warning sign to say the least. But you will see in combination with something like that is the funding rates go negative where you pay to go short. They did just flip negative. Wow. On what time frame am I looking at? On an hourly. Let's see on the daily. That's where we want to see that negative flip. And we're ever so slightly negative, right? Ever so slightly negative. You want to see the read get into uh, zero, not point, not one percent. That is when the bottoms, the lows get put in. So not point one percent. That was it. Was that it? <clears throat> not even that. That's close enough. Is close enough. 
Look at that low that was put in as Bitcoin came in at not 0.9. Sorry, not 0.1%, not 0.1%. That's low, massive low put in here, not 0.3%. Massive low put in here, not 0.1. So if we do see funding rates get negative, man, good sign to you know pull those longs out and start going to the long party. Uh, fear and greed index ticking up or well we're still in the greedy zone at 57 so again lows typically get put in where people are max fearful right now people are not quite fearful enough yet um, hey if you guys do want to learn how to trade uh, and have a better understanding of the underlying market dynamics you can go to cryptcourses.com the link is in the description below Sign up for free for 30 days, uh, Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis and join in on the Discord where we do offer some trade signals um, almost every day. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. All right, now for the meme coin, uh, the meme coin of the day, sir. Not Trump, not not. Not the MAGA coin, which that one is uh, out there, but the one I want to bring up is Tuker on Solana. Make sure you get the right symbol there. Um, you can go back actually and see. There's a lot of fakes out there. This stuff is a bit, uh, but the symbol on Solana is the 9EYSE. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but. Um, Man, I wish I would have bought some earlier. I did start accumulating probably back here. Uh, but if you look at the return on this one right now, I mean, to where we're at right now, it's up a thousand percent. Not bad, not bad from the lows, right? Up a thousand percent. So a good, you know, good, good steam on the market. Still relatively low market cap, 72, 72 uh, million. Uh, and the second meme I'm going to bring up on Ton Chain, which Ton has been very popular, very, you know, Ton is the Telegram coin. Ton has, um, well, they got a huge user base. I mean, think about all the Telegram users out there. This is called Resistance Dog, symbol R E D O. Uh, I haven't bought any myself, um, but I, I think I'm, I'm, you know, taking a look for a reason because it's the number one meme coin on the Ton ecosystem. So apparently where you can buy it, Ston.Fi, never heard of it. Um, again, not financial advice. This one's at a hundred million dollar market cap, right? A hundred million dollar market cap. You know, despite, uh, you know, the market volatility, this thing is just smoking to the upside. Look at it on the daily time frame. We are in a bit of a range here. So, um, you know, not bad there. Seven day time frame, basically coming off the range low there and one month time frame off the range low. So yeah, it, you know, might be worth consideration, you know, stops uh, below the, the wick, you know, I would probably, you know, tighten it up there, but needless to say, um, you know, Tuker is the one I would be taking a look at and why it's, it's absolutely hilarious. It's a meme coin. They're going to interview the other memes on the market and go over the news Tucker, uh, I mean, Tucker Carlson, I'm a huge fan. Guy's awesome. Kind of like stands with the, you know, the movement of Bitcoin is, you know, stand for freedom, stand for freedom of finance and, you know, be your own bank and get yourself off, you know, the crooked social media, the fake news media. So anyways, we're going into political season. Take a look really quick at Tucker. Oh, man, bad, bad language. Gary Gensler doing the rain dance. Yep, Dubai apparently got some rain at Token 24. I mean, I would really love to go to that event uh, the next time. 
there is the opportunity to go. I think I'll go maybe next year. Maybe next year, uh, Bitcoin Miami is no longer Bitcoin Miami today. Uh, this year, they're going to do it in, I believe, Kentucky. Kentucky or Tennessee, one of those uh, Midwestern. So that would be fun. Um, needless to say, I think that's it out of me today, guys. Um, we had some fun. Just want to check in on the liquidation levels one more time. I'm going to run this report. Seven day lick levels, that's what they call it. Seven day lick levels. And where are we the closest? The brightest yellow coming in at 64.5. So interesting to note there. You know, people are probably looking at that there. And then you've got some at 68.8. And I would say, you know, again, pressure is on to the downside for Bitcoin as long as we are below that 618 fib. 0.5618. We've been saying this is the box of peace and prosperity or death and despair. And with the stock market now down another 100 points, um, you know, they're highly, highly correlated. <laughs> they were highly correlated. Let's just see a correlation between NASDAQ and Bitcoin really quick here. I uh, got to put the line chart on for NASDAQ. How do I do that? Interesting. Also, the line chart, by the way. Oh, look at that. It's even more. All right, get rid of the moving averages. And we can see the correlation between the Bitcoin and the NASDAQ. I'm going to silence those drawings. And, well, this is Bitcoin, the orange line. No, that's NASDAQ. Right? Oh, don't fail me now, sir. Don't fail me now. Don't fail me now. Which one's Bitcoin? Which one is the stock market? All right. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. This is definitely Bitcoin. Yeah. Bitcoin's the orange line. Duh. Orange. Bitcoin, orange pill. All right. So, gosh, this is just really bad. Anyways, stock market up, Bitcoin up. Stock market down, Bitcoin down. Stock market picks up, makes some lows, and bang. I guess the return on Bitcoin is a little bit more than NASDAQ, that's for sure. Let's do a little measurement here from the lows off Bitcoin to the high. 359%, not bad, not bad at all, not bad at all. Stock market, 72%. NASDAQ, 72%. Bitcoin, 350%. Pretty high correlation, and now NASDAQ is coming down. And you can see Bitcoin taking a leg down. So, um, again, couldn't be a better time to be in crypto, to be following a channel where we give you live updates every single day. Make sure you subscribe, tickle the bell, and I will be back with another one tomorrow. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.